Hi everyone, it's Darcy from ThePurposefulPantry.com again. Uh, I talk about food storage, home organization, and all things in preparing for your family. Today we're going to do a, an extended video where I'm doing a pantry reorganization. Um, I'm here standing in front of my pantry that's a, a coat closet turned pantry. When we moved in, our kitchen only had a few uh, cabinets. It's a pretty small galley kitchen um, that doesn't have a lot of storage. And if you cook and if you do anything that's more than just buying a few groceries for a couple of days, there wasn't space in the kitchen to store anything. So we took this coat closet that was huge and just changed it into a pantry. But first, let me warn you, the pantry is a mess. We've had an extended time of home renovation in our house. And for a good long time, we weren't shopping for uh, extended uh, food storage, we were shopping to get us by till the next shopping trip, just stuff that I could cook uh, quickly because we didn't have a working kitchen. Um, and we since haven't recovered from that. It's been so easy just to get into that mode of buying stuff that was just quick and easy, not necessarily the most helpful for us, um, and just to get us through. We've also gone through a lot of our food storage that we had that we actually ate it up because that's what it was for. Um, and so I don't have a lot of dry storage in stock any longer. Um, my long-term food storage is not stored in this closet. We store it in our bedroom, um, under our bed, or in other places in the house. So what you're going to see is kind of like just this jumbled mess of uh, a horrible pantry that it's time to tackle and redo. So here we go. This way. So I'm going to take you on a little tour. First, right here are our new shelves. We are about to expand some of the stuff that's in the pantry, the shelving that I have in the pantry now, and I'll show you how that's going to work. Uh, so I've got the new shelves ready. We also have some brackets that I don't have here. They're in another place. Also, you'll see what's going out to the donate pile because we've been doing a ton of decluttering, leftover construction, kid shoes. Yeah, that's the way it is. So down here, you're also going to see the new flooring that we're putting in does not extend into the pantry yet, which is part of what's going to happen with this project. Uh, I won't get the flooring in just yet, but I'm going to at least get the pantry prepared for new flooring. So let's open up. And cue screamy movie uh, sound effects here where you see the girl screaming or hear the girl screaming. Uh, here's just a quick tour of what our pantry looks like. Up on top is where I keep a lot of uh, storage jars that I have been collecting knowing this project was coming. Um, I have some uh, extra oatmeal and pancake mix and rolled oats and some other things that are up there on the top. That This is just the shelf that we don't generally use. Uh, and yes, that is like a little spray bottle for water or oils um, that you would use. It's an uh, Alton Brown. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Leftover from a... Uh, show that we had him autograph it and sign it. We were we we're big fans, so we're just geeks. This next row is our pretty much our junk row. Um, snack crackers, cereal, then we go into our breakfast. Uh, this is oatmeal packets that we would either make or buy. Um, we also keep some nuts and things for my husband's lunches. Then into uh, homemade baking mix, uh, cereals, uh, flours, some baking things on the top up there. Um, then this is the baking corner. Uh, this is at pretty much the entire baking area. Um, we store our sweeteners and honeys here and I'm getting really frustrated by this. Every time we open one of these raw um, and unfiltered honey bottles that we would get from Sam's uh, and some extras that my mother-in-law gave us from her store, the minute we open them, they crystallize and it makes it hard to use them. And it's not as if our house is cold where I expect crystallization to happen. This is just general crystallization. Um, so I'm trying to figure out a way to, to not do that. If you have any comments on that, post it below. I don't want to put it in the microwave to warm it up because that really reduces, oops, sorry about that, that reduces any of the health benefits of raw honey uh, by killing off all the good, the good bits in it. Um, but that's, that's what we got. Um, powdered mushroom, then this is our spice area for the larger things that don't fit in the cabinets I'll show you in a minute. Then some uh, long-term food storage for salts, um, panko breadcrumbs, and some condiments that our kids like to add to their meals. Then this is the uh, basic food storage section for canned foods um, and stuff like that. You can see there are huge holes in it because we've eaten through a lot of this stock um, and haven't really replenished it. 
Down here is a jumbled mess of long-term food storage, tools, that's all my food saver, vacuum bag uh, storage, then some snack things like for um, snacks, oops, sorry, didn't get down far enough, snacks for the boys, then we have some popcorns, uh, long-term meat storage, um, a jumbled mess of things, our pastas and quinoa, box pasta, then down here is just what happens when you don't put things up, um, you're not eating what you shop for or it gets empty and people just start chucking stuff. Um, Today is clear off the shelves, clean the shelves, uh, install the new shelving day. So then um, I'll update you on how I store. We'll just kind of go through and do little mini tours as this video goes and I hope you'll stick around. So good morning, it's day two on our project. Uh, I've gotten most of the shelving cleared off except for this top section which is uh, storage jars that I'll take down and use as I need them um, and eventually that will become long-term storage. Um, I'm going to be cleaning off all the shelves, um, both from the liners and the shelves themselves just because stuff gets sticky and gets on here. Um, I'm going to be using my e-cloth which is the best thing I've purchased lately. Um, they are cleaning cloths that you do not have to use chemicals. Um, you might know other companies that do something similar to these, but these I just got off of Amazon, which makes it just super easy. Um, I'll leave a link below in case you want to check them out. But I've switched pretty much over to using these almost exclusively, and I absolutely love them, especially the cloth that cleans the windows. It's amazing. So follow along. Uh, should take me about an hour to get everything cleaned up and start putting everything back in. Okay, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of um, what the setup is like in here and what I did to extend these shelves. And they would be great for you for doing things um, like extending linen closet shelves or doing anything like that. Just trying to put a little extra space wherever you have it. Um, for many people, you could actually add a shelf up here on your header of any of your closets, a small shelf um, with easy access. Use brackets, uh, using brackets like this to to mount them would be a great place to add some extra storage no matter what size your pantry or your closet might be. Um, originally this was a coat closet like I said in the beginning which is a regular coat closet um, shelving unit. We went and bought um, I think it's been such a long time since we did this it's been like 17-18 years. These were just boards that we purchased from Lowe's that I primed and painted. They were uh, just wood and I don't remember it's like three quarter inch something but I don't remember what kind of wood this was but it was inexpensive um, it just let me um, pr I primed it then I painted and we added these extra shelves originally we added these brackets which in hindsight um, at the time um, if I could replace these I would it's just they are really mounted well into the studs and I don't want to try to take them out and redo it but this bracket causes a problem with storage that I can't put taller things here Which found over time that the shelf um, actually bowed with weight so we went and added a second bracket at the other place where we have a stud where it made sense to give it a little bit more bracing these are actually laminate closet shelves. They are uh, particle board, oops, sorry, particle board on the inside and laminated on three sides. I just went and bought a full shelf and cut it in half to fit my space. I was going to put like my tall wrapping paper, wrapping like Reynolds wrap and uh, saran wrap and all those kind of wraps, but the, the holder that I use for these is just a little wider than will fit in the space, so we'll figure out other ways to use this. You know, um, if you store packaged spices, those little pockets would be a great thing to put in this space that you can just store pockets and pockets of those kind of um, package mixes because that's a good dead space to put it in. A quick tip, when you're doing um, your canned vegetables, canned fruit, jars, whatever you're trying to stock, um, even your boxes if it makes it easier. Take a sharpie and on the top of your can mark the expiration date so that you can see it easily. Um, those little tiny dates that are on there, even the code that's weird that you kind of have to figure out, uh, makes it hard for you to rotate and keep all of your your pantry products going through and that you're not uh, so that you're not letting them get past their expiration dates or their best buy dates. Um, so make sure you mark those. Uh, 
a great organizing tip. Use magazine racks um, to store your bulk pasta. All right, it's day three, seriously day three. First day, uh, I spent emptying out the pantry, clearing off all the shelves. That night, we put in the new uh, shelves on the side that I'll show you. Well, I guess you've seen a little bit of it already, but uh, I'll just kind of walk you through the whole tour of the pantry, what we did with it. So today, I finished up labeling, um, and I'm now ready to show you the inside. Would you like to see? So, let's get started on the tour. Here is the new pantry. Wah! As you can see, I pulled out the old carpet. It was just disgusting and gross. Um, this is on the list to do, I think, for October to come put new flooring in. So we're just going to stay concrete for now. So I'm going to take you on a tour from the bottom up. Um, what I did is that this open space now, uh, I got rid of some old dishes that we didn't keep, that we didn't use anymore and created a space for me to put my potatoes instead of having them on the kitchen counter where they take up a lot of room. And our emergency, um, short-term emergency water storage is going to be kept here in the back corner. Then this is my big bag of uh, baking soda. I use it to clean with, I use it to cook with, I use it to, to do some laundry with. So I keep a big bag of it. I got this at Costco. Here are um, a couple of bins that we have. One for my husband's um, lunch foods that he takes to work. Um, one of my boy stuff that I didn't clean out the bin, but there you go. This bottom one down here is um, old silverware and um, various kitchen utensils that we rarely use, but I, I don't want to pack away. But it's got our corn cob dishes of my mom's that I keep and we use every time we have corn on the cob. Um, this bottom drawer down here is for dehydrated products that I need to process. Um, when I'm doing dehydrated greens, I collect them for a while until I'm ready to go ahead and grind them all together and I can store them away and I've got a few bags in there to do. This bin is full of extra uh, dried goods. So this is some jerky for the, the kids. Oh, there's my garbanzo beans I need to find. There they are. Um, obviously, I need to find the container because... I had this knowing that the small container I had for them was not going to be enough and I needed to get something bigger, so I'll do that in a few minutes. Um, and then, oh, look, more garbanzo beans. So there's that drawer. It's just extra dehydrated goodies. And then this is a bin of snacks that are free for anybody to get whenever they want. So there's raisins and jerky, uh, dried other dried fruit. This next um, aisle, or aisle, because I'm talking about Costco. This next shelf is my husband's popcorn snack basket, which has his seasonings, um, bulk popcorn, and then bag popcorn because he likes the convenience of just tossing one of those into the microwave when nobody else wants popcorn. In the back here, you can't see it very well because it's dark. Um, these bottles right there are my, let's see if I can get it to focus on it, pumpkin cider. Um, oh, there we go. Some light would be helpful. That is my stash of pumpkin cider. Um, I love this stuff and I start having it in the fall, but I'll keep a stash all year long to have one every once in a while. But also in that spot, it's gonna be where I keep extra napkins and paper plates. Uh, I'll have a big package of paper plates that I keep tucked away in there for, just in case it's ever needed. This shelf is um, for long-term meat for proteins. Um, I have an extra space here, actually an extra space for tuna and then I'll fill the rest up probably with salmon. This is an empty space that's just empty. Somehow I came up with empty spot. I'll figure out a way to fill it, I'm sure, but it just nothing went in there. This top shelf is for spaghetti fixings. Um, so we've got some cans of just smaller serving spaghetti sauce here he can doll up for himself. Um, but we always have pesto, so that's a red pepper pesto there. The other pestos are in the uh, refrigerator right now. Then a package of hemp hearts that I use for um, Cereal and salads and yogurt and, uh, gosh, I'll toss on whatever I'm eating for lunch. It's a good protein, kind of like having quinoa, um, an extra protein just to, to throw on things. It's got more protein and more omega-3s than flaxseed or chia seed, which I use a ton of. This section is for grains, pastas, and potato flakes that I keep for just in case. We don't have them too often because we really do prefer 
um, homemade mashed potatoes. But if I'm in a bind and don't have enough potatoes to make, then I'll just do this sometimes to get it done quickly. Back here is our, uh, our noodle stash. So we have, um, I keep thin spaghetti or linguine here in this magazine holder that keeps it all contained so it doesn't fall apart. And back in the back back here is a package of lasagna and then our Asian noodles that we do. Down here is our little appliance garage. My Instant Pot, my KitchenAid slicer, our waffle maker down on the bottom, and my cast iron skillet that I can't use on my, um, it's right back here behind my food saver bags. I can't use it on my glass top uh, stove anymore. I'm actually really afraid to, so I'm putting it down here on top of some plastic just to keep it in the meantime until I get the guts to actually use it on my glass stove. Then uh, back in the backpack there is what I've got left of my canning supplies. I need to get some more. This little bin will be for my food storage, uh, I mean for my food saver bags. I just need to get them in there. haven't done that yet. It's on the list. Then the spice cabinet. Um, these are all of the spices that I use. And I, as I mentioned before, these little drink uh, water drink pouches that we use for our emergency kits for our car, our 72 hour bags, um, just to toss in for an emergency. Oh, that's not dirt. That was my little one year old who found a magic marker. I mean, a Sharpie, a red Sharpie one day and decided to be like Harold in the purple crayon. One day when I was on the phone with the utility company, he ran around the entire house at little boy level and drew uh, marks on all my walls. I got them all cleaned up, but saved this one just so it was always there to remember that by. All right, so this shelf is canning lids and toppers. Then a little package, a collection of taco seasonings um, that are quick and easy. Extra spice jars for when I need them down the road. Um, these are my spice mixes. More up here. They are full because we are running solo. Um, this year has not been a good year for dehydrating for me. Um, as you guys who are in our group know, um, I just haven't been, we've had so much going on. It's been put away for a good chunk of the year. Um, cumin, I always grind my own because I don't like store-bought cumin. Um, I find that with whatever spice that I can, I, I store it whole so that uh, when I use it, I can grind it at the time and it's fresh and tastes much better. Um, and then up here are just some extra bins. Okay, the next shelf. Here are all my bulk dehydrated products. I've got about a year's worth of mushroom powder. Probably two years, actually, between that and the bag. Um, dehydrated strawberries. Some cranberries that I... Not cranberries. Yes, actually dried cranberries that I need to food, um, put in smaller packaging to make them store better. Uh, dehydrated marshmallows here. Um, and I will leave you links below to any of the tutorials I have on my blog for those. This is our prepared food section, um, processed foods. We don't do a ton of this stuff, but when I buy stuff, it's for quick and easy meals that if we're just in a huge hurry, I'll have. And this, this full of little, um, packets of rice mixes that we like, um, that turn into a great side when we're in a super hurry. And then some noodle mixes the same way. Then soups, canned fruit, which obviously I'm running low on. This is our broth shelf, um, and obviously it's also quite low. Um, my Instant Pot is great for keeping broth, and I keep some in the freezer. I just don't can it up yet, um, so I make sure that I have shelf stable ready to go. Then back here, I put in a Lazy Susan to have some easy access to a lot of the jars that I didn't want um, just try when I would try to pick them up I would knock other ones over and so this came out this turned out to be the best way for me to do it so I'm glad I picked it up then this is just some random boxed um cake mix that I had that I got I think it was like 25 30 cents at the store that I grabbed because I love carrot cake um so I grabbed that one day um this is a box of a collection of random condiments from the favorite places that we will eat which is Whataburger and Chick-fil-a because my guys really like the spicy ketchup from Whataburger and we all love Chick-fil-A sauce. Um, I use this other magazine rack right here to store all of my wraps. So I've got parchment paper um, and way too much of it. I don't know how I've ended up with that. An extra box of dehydrator sheets for my dehydrator. Um, wax paper should be there. Oh, no, I don't have any wax paper left. And I'll have to pick up some of that. I'll put it on the list. And then extra 
aluminum foil. All right, then this is for crackers. Um, my kids and my husband love to snack on snack crackers. Um, so I make sure that I usually always have quite a few boxes of it here for snacks. We do like saltines. Um, so I have quite a few boxes there in storage uh, just in case. Then back here is little um, salt and pepper panko breadcrumbs. <clears throat> my uh, kosher salt and the overstock. Um, any of the other condiments we keep, we don't do many of them because we're just not big on extra sauces. So spicy ketchup that the kids like, um, ranch dressing that my husband and son like. I usually try to make our own dressings out of, uh, just from scratch, but this one we make sure we always have. Some peanut butter powder that we use to add to smoothies. Um, this is a great way to get protein in without all the fat. It does not reconstitute into regular peanut butter as you know it, but it is a great way to add extra protein to things like smoothies or, um, brownies or things like that. And I love having it on hand. Um, a little bit of jelly that our peanut butter supply and something you might notice on this one. Um, I like to mark my jars with, uh, the best buy date so that I know what order to use them. Um, and then the one that's open at the time, I mark open so that we're sure to not keep opening extra bottles of peanut butter, which we were known to do at some point. <clears throat> so that's a great way. Um, my friend Jan on in our group on uh, Facebook called the Build a Purposeful Pantry, um, when I had talked about doing um, dates on top of my cans to make sure that I could rotate through them quickly. And I could see that date as opposed to the little date here. That's hard to read. She actually suggested writing on here, what the product was inside the can in case you lose the wrapper for some reason. Um, and that was a great tip from Jan. Thanks Jan. Then up here we have, um, other, um, canned vegetables. Um, and this is our general canned vegetables. Um, as you can see, I don't store a lot of tomato products. I said earlier that we don't really eat them anymore. So I just keep this little bit of um, extra just in case we need it for some kind of um, dish. This will be green beans um, and probably more sweet potatoes that go in this section. And then we have other things up here that will stock out um, when I start filling back up. Then this is the rest of my spice section and other condiments for cooking. So, um, then back here are some of our other bulk spices, garlics, uh, ranch dressing, turmeric, um, some cayenne pepper, cinnamon, peppercorn, sea salts, um, garlic salt, ginger, other cinnamon, cloves, um, and then some, right back here, some black finishing salt, um, um, some sugars, uh, sugars right here that I keep in bulk, uh, chocolate chips and you can tell that my chocolate chips haven't been used in a while and they're starting to get a little oxidized. doesn't mean they're bad. It just means they're a little aged. Uh, my vanilla I'm using, my, I don't know if you can see it back there. That's my bottle of uh, vanilla still being made. So I need to do another one because it's almost empty now. Um, in the back back here is more vanilla beans, um, baking soda. Oh, that's cocoa powder back there. I need to make a label for that. I forgot. Then this is jellos and gelatins. Uh, this is more canning uh, supplies like um, pectin and liquid pectin and some sugar-free pectin that my dad gave me from when he used to can. Um, then up here are just some sprinkles and other kind of things for cupcakes and the like. Then um, just basics, flour, sugar, powdered sugar. Um, uh, yeah, that's what that is. Then breakfast over here is oatmeals, quick oats, rolled oats, and steel cut oats, um, and then packaged oatmeal because we do all of these versions depending on what kind of morning it is. In the very back back here is extra sugar and extra flour. Then just the one little section of cereal that is a snack item for my, all of my guys. Here is uh, paper towels. I have a bigger stock back in our linen closet uh, in the paper bin. Um, or on the paper shelves that we keep bulk stuff on, but I keep just the quick grab ones here to make sure that we don't have to go back there all the time. In the back are some serving dishes that are left over from my mother, my grandmother, and my mother-in-law that I keep back there in the corner. Um, then a picnic bag with some lunch bags inside. Some extra pancake mixes that um, I got so incredibly, I think I paid less than a dollar for those. And for the convenience of just whipping it up with a little water um, on the go, it's fast. These power cakes that I love, um, the Kodiak cakes, we use them a lot. Extra oats, 
then some of our long-term storage foods that um, I'm about to try this Asian teriyaki um, and then I keep this butter powder there to start playing with. Um, we keep most of our long-term storage in another room in our house uh, for foods like this but if I'm working with the can I keep it out here. Then behind those are just extra storage jars. Then some extra iced tea packages and some hot cocoa mix that we only use rarely. Um, this is a bowl that my mother used to always serve Chex Mix in and it's kept as a family heirloom that every Christmas I try to make Chex Mix and uh, do that. Then more storage and then back here in the back are some of the, like these are like giant sized solo cups that if we have company um, or my boys have friends over we can use those to drink out of since we just drink out of glass most of the time. So that is the basic of the pantry. Um, if you have questions about anything that you saw here, suggestions about the way I've set it up, how you might do it a little differently. Granted, I understand that you might keep different kinds of foods here, and that's not what we're going to talk about. But the suggestions I would love is how you might organize this for your family a little better. Um, originally, I had a lot of this um, canned food and things that I needed to make sure that we were eating from often kind of stuck back in the corners. And so I tried to rearrange this so that it were it was... Important foods are kept front and center so that I can make sure that we um, were eating the things that we really needed to eat and taking down the snack sections like what's over here, making sure they, the space for those were compacted so we weren't buying snacks, so many snacks because we had the space, which uh, we were doing for a little while. So um, let me know your thoughts. Um, I, I'd really appreciate hearing them. I will link down anything that I used here in the links below, like from uh, the shelving, the new shelving unit that I got, the label maker, um, and those kind of things so that you can go look if you, if you'd like to. I really appreciate you stopping by. Um, please give me a thumbs up to, to let me know that you enjoy this kind of content and you'd like me to make more of it. Um, subscribe to the channel because I'll keep posting more videos and I really do appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so very much. Have a blessed day.